In the beginning of Parasha, Parashat Pinchas, we see that Pinchas, Ben Elazar Ben Aharon HaKohen, receives a reward for his action in the last parasha. What's the reward? Hashem says, Lachen ineni noten lo et beriti shalom. This reward, says the Kotzke Rebbe, is very strange for Kanai. Kanai is somebody who's very zealous. He wants to fight anybody that doesn't do Hashem's will correctly, 100% the way he understands. If you see somebody who doesn't fit exactly what you think is Avodat Hashem, the correct things to do, you go and attack him and you go to a war against him. And it becomes sometimes very brutal. And therefore he asks, over here by Pinchas, which was the symbol of Kanaut, he was the Mekane, the first Mekane in the Torah. We see that he was Mekane Kinati, Bekanoet Kinati Betocham. And therefore he gets rewarded. What's the reward? He asked the question, I don't understand. The last thing a Kanai, a zealous person wants, is Briti Shalom. He wants peace, he doesn't want peace. He's ju constantly just looking to find people that are doing the wrong thing. He wakes up in the morning, the first thing he thinks about, who do I find today that I can be mochiach, that I can fight against, that I can show him that he's wrong, that I can have a war against him and an argument with him. The last thing a person that's a Kanai Hashem, a zealous person, would want, Beriti Shalom, peace. He wouldn't want the peace. That's the last reward a person like this wants. Rather, we see from here that Pinchas was very different. Pinchas was a different kind of Kanaut. And this is the right kanot. And to understand this, the explanation goes the following. It says in the end of the last week's parasha that when Pinchas saw what's happening, the avera that was going on, Vayar Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron Akohen, Vayako mitoch edah, Vayikach romach beyado. What's the lashon? Vayikach romach beyado. It's an extra lashon. It's, it's not needed. The answer to that is that some people that are Kanaim, they don't need that thing of Vaikach. The, the Romach, the knife, is already in their hand. They're just looking for a place to stab it. They're just looking for a place to put it. They already have the gun in their hand. They wake up in the morning, it's right there. They just need to know who they're shooting today. The mouth is already re ready to shoot, to abuse, to, to, to put down, to scream it. Just they need a korban. They need somebody. They need to look for somebody. And sometimes it's this person, and when they end up with this person, they go to the next one and the next one. This is their way of life. This is the wrong kanaut. This is a kanai that's not kanai Lashem. This is a teava, like all other teavot. person that has teavot. one of the teavot of a person is to show others that they're wrong. And usually it comes from midata geava, because... He needs to be able to justify what he's doing. He needs to be, feel elevated more than others. He needs to be able to feel better than others. But he doesn't feel that way. So therefore, that self-confidence is lacking in him. Therefore, he brings that out in showing others that they're wrong. This is called Gava. Why is this called Gava? Because any Baal Gava is somebody who doesn't feel good with himself. Because a person that feels good in himself, he doesn't need to, f to, to elevate himself over the others. He's already f okay with himself. That's why uh, Moshe Rabenu was Anav Mikol Adam. Why? He didn't, he didn't need to feel better than others. Why not? He was better than others. He, was, he had the qualities, even if he wasn't better than others. But he had the qualities. A person that has qualities, a person that feels good with himself, he doesn't need to express that anywhere. Rather, he feels humble, he feels good, he feels that other people are also good. He sees the world in a positive light. And therefore, Pinchas over here was that kind of person. He didn't need to elevate himself over others. The only thing that happened that bothered him is a real kanaut. And therefore, the Romach wasn't in his hand. He had to look for it because he had to do and make a maaseh kanaut. And therefore, for such a person, the Torah says, "Lachen emor inani noten lo et beriti shalom."
And this is something that's very, very much nogea in our generation. In our generation, we found those kanaim for hundreds and thousands. And the reason for that, again, is because they're not confident about themselves. They're, they're afraid that somebody wa might take their position, somebody might overdo what they're doing, they'll do better the job that they're doing. They're always on the lookout, taking a scan throughout everywhere, that we're still in the field and there's nobody here that's going to threaten us. And this is what's wrong in that kind of kanaut. Obviously, they, they take that when they feel that somebody might threaten their position, they go kanaut against him. They say that he's wrong for this and for that, and he's a bad person and he's doing the wrong thing. Why do they do all that? Not really that they care about it. They could care less because a person wouldn't act in such a way if that was the real Yirat uh, Shamayim uh, that was bothering him. In order to act in such a way, you have to, ha to be a Kadosh V'taor like Pinchas. Then a person would act. But a person that really does such a thing, but you don't see that he's mamash filled with Yirat Hashem, the reason he's doing that is because it's bothering him and nothing else. This is something that we need to keep in mind. Whenever we see somebody is going out of his way, to hurt somebody. In any possible way, we need to know that that person is uncertain of where he's holding. And you'll see that by the attacks he always finds against somebody that might threaten his position here, there, and go from one candidate to another candidate. And this is something that's very common in the media today. Because in the media today, you have a new phenomenon. And that is whenever somebody says anything, today you can very easily put him down. How do you do that? Let's say it's a shiur that a person gives. Let's say it's a, it goes on the air. All you need to do is press thumbs down. That's all. But that is an act that's a very cowardly. Why? Because whenever somebody sits behind the screen and is anonymous, there's no name, Nobody knows who you are. All you have to do is push the button, thumbs down. That shows how cowardly the person is. A person that really feels that he's doing the right thing is Avodat Hashem. He means that this is what Hashem wants. He doesn't usually put the thumbs down. He doesn't look at others negatively. He looks at himself negatively. The only places we found in the Torah that the Torah says that one should go against others, are over here in Parashat Pinchas, that a Kanai, a Boel Aramit, Kanaim Pugimbo. Kanaim Pugimbo is a very, very dangerous thing. What Pinchas did is a very dangerous thing. Because Chachamim explained to us that Zimri could have right away, within seconds, go against Pinchas, because Pinchas had right now a Dino for death. And if Zimri would realize what's going on, he could have taken his sword and killed Pinchas. Not only that, the Torah says that if they weren't in the middle of Avera, a split seconds afterwards, Pinchas would be a murderer. He wouldn't be making over here Maase Tzidkut, Maase Kanaut. Rather, it would be considered a Retzach, a murder. A second later, which means Pinchas over here took a big chance. He's going into doing something, but he doesn't know if what he's doing might turn against him. Because could be that Zimri would go against Pinchas. He had a full right allochically. Pinchas was a rodef, as we explained. Could be that Pinchas would miss that second of the Avera in a split second, and he would be considered a roteach. So how is it the Torah puts somebody in such a light that you could put yourself in such a danger just for doing a, some, the right thing. You're doing the right thing over here. So what happens if it happens afterwards? What happens if they left already the scene and you go after the person that made Davira? Why not then? The reason for that I heard from a good friend he, that we need to understand that whenever we're going against other people, we need to understand that we're taking a risk. We can't do it risk-free. You can't go out against other people risk-free. You can't press a button, thumbs down, or put a nasty comments 
that is risk-free in the Torah. In the Torah, you can't speak Lashon Ara behind the other people, risk-free. We found that also by Edim. Edim, they have to give a testimony. They have to testify against somebody who just violated something very severe. So they go to Betin and they give that testimony. Could be the person who was Mechalel Shabbat. And they go and they say, we saw him Mechalel Shabbat, we gave him a warning, and he still did it. When they're doing that, they need to know that they're taking a great risk. Why is that? Because it could very much be that two other witnesses would come and say, how could that be? You were with us somewhere else in that day. And this is considered Edim Zomemim. And now Beddin, instead of killing the Mechalel Shabbat, would kill the, te- the, the, the Edim. A very risky thing to be Edim. Edim, to be Edim, you have to know that you're taking a serious, serious risk. And therefore, we see that concept again, so, again over here. We found very interesting that when we want to do something against others, you can't sit behind the screen, nameless, anonymous, and go attacking. If you feel it's real, your attack is real, you come, you show yourself, you, put, you, you, you write your name, and you say why things are wrong. That is the correct way. And even then, you have to know if that's correct or not correct, halachically. But at least that is that it's done with dignity. And not only that, you'll find, very interesting, that whenever there's attacks, they, it, they only come anonymously. But for instance, if you open, if anybody has such a thing, you open the Facebook over there, anybody that brings out anything, over there you'll find the compliments. Why in Facebook is compliments and in YouTube is thumbs down and nasty comments? The answer is YouTube is anonymous. So therefore anybody can sit behind the screen and have that taiva of his putting the thumbs down. But when it's Facebook, it's not anonymous. They'll see your face, your name, your friends. You can't say that. So only those that have compliments will write them down. It's very interesting. We need to understand that Although this idea that I'm talking about comes from kina, obviously, it could be that a person is very jealous. Nobody puts a thumbs down because he didn't like the things that he saw. If you don't like it, there's no time. You go to the next thing. People uh, are, are, are loaded with different things to do. So therefore, you go to the next thing. If you had that, you, you, it came out in you that you need to put the thumbs down, one of three things must, might or must have happened. Either kina, that a person felt that I'm jealous of that person, although he doesn't realize sometimes what it is, because it's inside, but he feels the other person is doing so well, I have to push him down. How am I going to push him down? I have to push him down by putting a nasty comment. Or, it's the teava that we explained before. Some people have that teava to say things against others. It's a tava like all other tavot, or it's a kavod. Kavod means, I feel that it's better than me. So therefore, how, do I, how am I going to be able to balance over here, or be elevated more than him? Even if I do whatever I do, I'm not going to be able to elevate myself over him. So therefore, what do I do? Put him down. The more I push him down, I be over him. Although I don't elevate myself in any way, but if I push him down, I would have that feeling that he would, he would be under me. And that is a very negative idea because we are trained by the Torah to push ourselves up. On the contrary, if you're jealous from the other person, you, that should bring you to become better yourself, to look out to do things better, but not to try to push the other person down so you can feel good about yourself. And that is the cause normally of these things, of the nasty comments, of the thumbs down, and all things that come like that. But, who's afraid of thumbs down? Thumbs down, thumbs down is the greatest compliment in the world. You know why? Because if somebody doesn't get the thumbs down, the reason for that is because it's very boring, it's not interesting, he has nothing to sell. If a person doesn't get a nasty comment, that means it's ignored. 
We don't have time to put nasty comments on people that are so not interesting. If they getting the nasty comment, if they're getting the, the, the thumbs down, there's got to be a reason for that. What's the reason? Something was moved by the person that put it. Somebody was, something was, got him angry, got him jealous, got his kavod going over here very strongly. That is a very great compliment to the person that's getting that nasty comment. It's a nasty comment that's being done anonymously. You need to know there's people out there that looking up at you, that seeing that you're successful. That's not something to be afraid. That's not something that one should be intimidated for. From. We learn from here that Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron Cohen went on a mission. He didn't stand behind the screen. He went, and the Torah says his full name, full identity. Pinchas, Ben Elazar, Ben Aaron, Hakohen, he took the sword, he made the action in front of everybody, Bepharesia, he wasn't scared. If you're doing the right thing, you show yourself. If you're doing the wrong thing, you hide yourself.